Hey, what's up, guys? We are back again with a brand new series on the channel today. I'm going to be testing out a deck live with you guys and giving a ranking on its playability and the fun factor at the very end of the video. Usually, I know exactly how good a deck is before I create the video because I've tested it a lot. So I know that the deck will work well, and I only wanted to give you guys the best decks. But today, we're going to be testing out a deck combination that was played at over 8,000 trophies last season, and it got buffed with a new Musketeer and Mini Packer. I have no clue how this is going to work, but I wanted to test it out with you guys to find the strength and weaknesses together and see if the deck is actually good. Let me know if you guys enjoy this type of content and if you want to see a future series like this where we test things out together and try to find the best decks in the game or if you guys rather have me just show you the best decks out of all the ones that I test. I'm excited to hear what you guys have to say so let's go jump straight some games and assert dominance. Thanks to everyone that's using Creative Code Sir Tide to support the channel and all the daily uploads. Here we go guys, we're gonna jump into this one and we're sauce out of good luck. So first things first, I want a Miner in the safe spot so we don't give him an easy King Tower activation. I really wish I had Tornado with my deck because that is the easiest activation of my life with a Royal Ghost coming at me like that. What you doing, brother? He's got metal fingers apparently, if I judge by his clan. Oh, wait. Are you serious? You've got Log with this. Are you not running a Pekka deck or are you running a Pekka deck with Log? I hope that you Pekka here so then I can ban it in the other side and get free damage. What am I playing against right now? I'm so confused. Is this a Three Musketeer deck? It would make sense because Three Musketeers recently did get a buff. Oh, no, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And with the Hunter out of cycle, I can go through with my Wall Breakers and potentially get some value. Rail Ghost is not going to come down in time, I think. Oh, are you kidding me right now? Not on my watch. Are you joking? Yo, Ghost, you were supposed to ghost them, man. You were never supposed to text them back. But you were able to hit the Wall Breakers. You hit them up. You clobbered them and you made me super sad, man. Like, I do that to me. Okay, so fortunately for us, we've got Snowball to push back the Royal Hogs here. We're going to take a ton of damage in the process, though. You guys realize that three Musketeers are still on the table. We haven't identified if this guy is going to be packing a punch with that or if he's just got an interesting Royal Hogs fast cycle deck. So I'm interested to find out, sir. You've got Hunter after the buff, too, and you're running a card like Royal Piggies that... You know, got considerably worse. They're not the worst card in the game anymore, but they're not extremely overpowered like they were before. So I'm going to Mega Knight on top of the Bandit every time that I can because it's going to give me a good trade. And then Ice Golem's out of cycle, so I think he's got a Hunter here. Might be able to snipe the Hunter with a Musketeer. If this is smart, then I can vibe ahead and get a lot of damage. Come on, Musketeer, show me what you're made of. You got buffed for a reason. Mega Knight's still jumping for joy, and that destroyed his dreams. He was not anticipating that type of card cycle, guys. So Musketeer, because of the faster firing rate, pulls off surprise interactions that people aren't used to yet. That's one thing that I think that everyone needs to start doing a little bit more. Understand that cards that are fresh, that are unique, that are newly changed interactions, take advantage of those whenever you can, because most likely your opponent's not going to be ready for it. I'm going to go for a Musketeer. And then potentially go in for a wall breakers here too. Because his hunter is out of cycle. He has to go for Royal Ghost. If it targeted the Musketeer, we would have been able to get that. I was hoping it would, it didn't. Uh, I'm going to mini Pekka and then I can snowball on top of the fire sphere. I was hoping we could hit the hunter, but I am not playing well with snow today, guys. I can't build a snowman. I'm sorry. What are you doing? Are you feel bad for me because I missed the snowball? Is that, is that what's happening here? I don't want your pity positive elixir trades, bro. I want to earn them myself. So I'm in a wall breakers with the bandit. I think that if he goes in for a hunter, we can snowball it. Oh, wow. It's three musketeers. I thought he would hunter that immediately. Why did he not hunter that? Why would he three musketeers? <laughs> did he know I was going to preemptively snowball? I mean, I guess it was a good play for him because he would have gotten screwed if he huntered and he would have lost the game. But how did he know that I was going to do that? Uh, it's just, uh, okay, you know what? It is what it is, man. I'm going to follow up with a bandit, a miner in the back, and then apply aggression on both sides. So you have to respond to the Mega Knight. Otherwise, we're just going to straight up take your tower there. And I don't care which tower I take as long as I win the game. GG, well played, and peace out, buddy. It was a pleasure tearing your towers to pieces. So it seems like the singular musketeer is better than the triple. All right, so jumping into this one, we're poised and positioned to climb up trophies as quickly as we possibly can. I mean, we've got Mega Knight plus Bandit after all. We got to move fast. So I want to get out a lot of Elixir with that Bandit on the left-hand side so then I can Minor Wall Breakers and Gallivant my way through while getting a lot of damage on either lane. So if we're playing against a Lava Hound deck, realize that Musketeer after the buff pops off. So I'm going to rely heavily on the fact that I can Musketeer here, snipe the Mega Minion, and have it go in the same lane against the Lava Hound. That's one thing that I've always loved. That's a good plan. 
Usually people that play hog rare at the highest level will go for a hog rare on the other side and then they'll use a musketeer to counter the barbarians or whatever in the middle and have it still go in the lane that they want. Unfortunate that the guy was good enough to go in for a fly machine there. It is what it is. Your plan failed. We'll take the damage, we'll uh, eat what we have to, and I'll go in for bats afterward. Just don't want the fly machine to go off of our tower. I know I've never really said that before, but today, you know, times are changing. I'm gonna push the fly machine away now, and then I will be able to musketeer. Musketeer probably snipes the fly machine first, then it goes to the skeleton king, and then it goes to lava hound. So I'm definitely gonna lose my tower. That's a fact of life. There's no way of keeping that thing alive. But at the same time, I'm looking at the game and I'm like, okay, we understand what your deck is because it's one of the best decks in the game. It's a Lava Hound deck with Skeleton King and Miner with Arrows Fast Cycle. This is a deck that Pompeo played at top ladder, so you know, being able to recognize those decks effectively allows you to pop off harder. Also, Musketeer after the buff. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Seriously, are you kidding me? This is why we run Musketeer now. It killed the Mega Minion and it finished off the tower. That's a two for one special trade that we take every day of the week. So I'm going to Mega Knight in the back because, we remember, we know what his deck is. He's not going to have a good answer to the Mega Knight besides a Fly Machine. He does not have Inferno Dragon in the deck. So I can go in for a Musketeer again and hopefully be able to make sure that the Fly Machine dies. He'll probably go in for a... Ooh. No, I was going to say Lava Hound ahead of that, but he didn't. Arrows come down. That's pretty good for me if I'm able to kill the Skeleton King quickly before he goes in for the ability. Ah, he goes in for the ability. Smart player. Credit where credit is due. You deserve that value. But you got snowballed and we push it back. That's why I think that snowball is way better than zap. It allows you to get these interactions that would never be possible. I'm going to Mega Knight at the river right now when he goes in for a lawbound. He doesn't do it. Wow, dude, you're playing so well. You know, I hate playing against people that are good at the game because I would have been able to win with a Mega Knight at the river there. Wow, that would have been so clutch. I tried to make a prediction, but he predicted my prediction and he screwed me over. So very, very well played there, man. I'm going to have to snowball here. I'm going to go in for a bandit as well. Maybe I can get something through here. It's going to look really spicy, though. If I am I able to catch the miner? Am I able to catch the miner? I hope so. I mean, <laughs> I really need to at this point. Bats coming down. Oh, that was clutch. You know what? The Musketeer stays alive as per usual. And Mega Knight, I wall breakers. We can walk away with a dominant position here. Hopefully, the mini packet gets up as a hit, too. Oh, wait, do I wall breakers? Oh, yes, I do want to, but I want to kill the Skeleton King first. If I don't kill the Skeleton King, we're screwed, so please don't get an ability off. That's a good boy. Bandit locks onto the tower. Musketeer locks as well. We're able to snowball back the fly machine for more damage. That is delicious. That is scrumptious. That is a snack and a half, my dudes. He'll probably go in for a lot of hound in the middle. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. Find out on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. So I'm going to Bandit here. Maybe we can get that through. I don't know if he's going to have an answer. He miners. He's so quick. Wow, you know what, dude? You're truly talented. If you beat me, credit is credit where uh, credit is due. You know, like this is one of those situations where uh, I haven't played against someone this good in a long time. All right, I'm going to go in for bats again and snowball afterward. I might be able to snipe the fly machine, but I don't know if I'm able to keep the tower alive. I 100% want to go in for a banda here so then it can able to body block a little bit. I'm going to have to miner on defense on his miner. I'm still not able to shut that down because I think the skeleton dragon's lock onto my tower. This guy played so well. GG, well played, and peace out, buddy. It was a pleasure playing against you. This was a great game. And you know, I wish I could win it, but it's no shame losing to a talented player. All right, so after that loss, we got to bounce back, guys. We cannot be playing against people that good two times in a row. It's simply not going to happen. So I'm going to go for wall breakers whenever we get the opportunity. Oh my gosh. Are we going to get the redemption arc against Lava Hound? It has to happen here. It has to be near. We got to inspire the fear. This is definitely going to be the exact same deck that we played against, right? It is so far so good. It's going to be skeleton dragon cycled with the tombstone out of cycle. Maybe we can go for like a musketeer here. Oh, redemption arc, baby. Let's get stronger. We're in the fighting arena leveling up our skills. And now we are ready to show you guys what we're made of. Mega Knight isn't going to be necessarily the best play. I'd rather go in for a Miner here with the Musketeer still tank for... Yes! Let's go, baby! Let's get fired up! Let's burn his tower down! That Musketeer is my hero! Starry, starry night. All good characters must come to an end. I cannot believe how much damage I just got there. I literally am in disbelief. I am in shock. That Musketeer and the timing was immaculate. We are popping off. Oh, it's not the same deck. This is actually way harder. This is way, way, way harder than the last one, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to go in for a Miner here and then Snowball afterward and then hope and pray that we can go and catch the Miner with the Mini Pekka. The Mini Pekka is able to tank. This is this is about as well as I possibly could have played. I'm going to Snowball this back and potentially shut this down. Yo, I defended that. 
That defense was definitely the best defense I've had in a long time. I'm playing really well right now. You know what? We gotta like get destroyed by someone way better than me to get to our next level. It's it's always the redemption arc that feels so good. I'm gonna ban it here. Please don't lock out of my tower. Yes, sir. Bandit's gonna lock and load potentially. And now we've got a musketeer or a mega knight. I think that we want to mega knight this real bad, but am I gonna be able to afford it in time? Oh, this is so sketchy. I feel like I have to. If I went for the musketeer, it just wouldn't have been fulfilling. Mega knight, save my booty. Oh, yes, you saved my booty. So, assume he goes in for the Inferno Dragon. We'll go in for a mini pack on the other side. I have to try to take the other tower here. Uh, I don't want to do anything else besides try to take the other tower because I know that he's going to almost all in on defense there. Ooh, is the bandit going to lock onto the skeleton or is it going to lock onto what we needed to? It's going to lock onto the tower. Good stuff. We take those vibes. And then I musketeer here too. If the bandit's able to take the entire tower there, then we're vibing. I also probably need to snowball to keep the musketeer alive so we can finish off most of the stuff there. I'm going to mini P.E.K.K.A. I'm going to go in for a minor wall breakers when I can afford it. I need that mini P.E.K.K.A. to be able to kill. I really need that mini P.E.K.K.A. to be able to kill. I'm going to minor wall breakers here. I'm going to ban it. And then I'm going to go in for a... Oh, am I going to lose this one too? Am I going to lose this one too? State ain't so, bro. State ain't so, bro. I think I played this one so clean. No way, right? So I'm actually going to lose this game as well, simply because I think that uh, I just wasn't able to play against someone with Inferno Dragon to counter the Mega Knight, and then arrows for the Wall Breakers, plus Tombstone to pull the Wall Breakers. And we got BM'd like heck, but honestly guys, I don't think I could have played that any better. It is what it is, sometimes you lose two games in a row, you bounce on to the next one, and hopefully we can bounce back. If anything, it shows you if you guys play against a Barbarian's deck with a Tombstone and Arrows, they're probably going to have great answers to your Wall Breakers, and the Mega Knight's definitely going to die to Inferno Dragon, so don't feel too bad if you play against a Lava Hound deck that you do not beat. Also, I probably would have won the game if he didn't catch the last Miner with the Barbarians, but it is what it is. All right, let's see if we can bounce back against those losses against Lava Hound. My suspicion is this deck is really strong against people that have a Hog Rider, Ram Rider, or Bridge Bam. Not so good against Lava Hound, you have to play a lot better than your opponent to win, but I think in this type of situation, if we're playing against someone with a Dark Prince, probably not going to be a Lava Hound deck. Nope. So let's see if we can vibe with that. Dark Prince Tornado. Ooh, that was really aggressive from our opponent. So I like that play, finishing off all of our stuff on our side, so then the Dark Prince isn't maybe able to connect to the tower. Archer Queen. Okay. So you guys already know, Mega Knight trounces that card. Musketeer probably wins on a one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to aid her with the Snowball just to make sure... Oh, that was... You can't defeat me. I don't know. I don't think he gets an ability down in time. I'm going to risk it for the biscuit. I think we just eat the damage and don't get any ability. Awesome. Yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I was playing with fire. And the snowball helped me out because we were able to propel it closer to my tower. And I didn't have to respond to it. I think if we didn't do that damage, it would have gotten a hit on my tower. And on top of that, he would have been able to, you know, have a little bit more time to get a reset of the ability, which is not fun to play against, obviously. So I can Musketeer Miner push in left-hand side and get some cheeky chip. I believe that we can get the value. 100% want a snowball, but I can't. I can't justify it as much as I want to. It just isn't the right decision. I'm going to mini pack it here instead. Dark Prince is going to go towards that. It is going to slap me silly for a slight second. But maybe I think mini packing on top of the Archer Queen is not going to give us the hit. The Mega Knight will. So, Mega Knight jumps for joy. If you go for undercover business, you're not going to get any value from it. So, I'm ready. We're going to disrupt your undercover business and shut it down. Free value. So, I wonder if I want to ban it here, too. Because if you're able to kill the Goblin Cage and then you ban it afterward, the bandit's going to dash onto the Cage Brawler, allowing you a little bit more value from the Mega Knight. And then if they don't have Barbro and they don't have Goblin Cage, how are they supposed to stop the Wall Breakers? He has nothing. Let's get that vibe. Double connections. We are striving for greatness, baby. So, in this particular situation, he's just going to keep graveyarding me, right? So, I'm not going to save my bats because I think some of them will go back anyway. And then we're going to be able to completely kill the graveyard. If you poison, you are really living on the brink of despair, my dude. You are spending all of your elixir right now. Oh, if I had Magic Archer, imagine. Imagine all of the damage that we could get. Imagine the dominance that we could deliver on a silver platter. Doesn't matter. High chance any graveyards right now into a Musketeer with an Archer Queen. Please do it. Give me the mega value. Give me the mega sauce. So I'm going to mini pack on the other side, not to get damage, but to force out extra elixir, especially if I can go for bats. That would feel great. I think we're able to bait out more stuff, and the musketeer stays alive. It's able to kill mega minions. It's able to kill bar barrels now. So in that particular situation, I think musketeer is a dominant card. Like, it's, it's probably an A or S tier card for me at this point. 
Ooh, I'm going to eat that damage, and then I'm going to go in for a Mega Knight, and I'm going to follow up with a Mini Pack on the other side, and then I will go in for Wall Breakers here. So this Mini Pack is to, to try to force out Extra Elixir. If we can get um, a Dark Prince there, that would be awesome. If it goes directly towards the tower, that's even better. Finishes off the Barbrill. He's got the Tornado, both the Wall Breakers, but he can't get it down in time. Let's go. Miner in the back. He could Tornado this, hypothetically, but... I don't think the Dark Prince is going to get back there in time. So all I need to do is get one more Juicy Snowball and we walk with a win. If I'm able to defend this, that is. So uh, yeah, let's see if we're able to pull that off. I'm going to go in for Bats. Wonder if we are in a bad spot. Come on, Bats, clutch up. Wow, why is this game so close right now? Holy cow. All right. Yeah, that's a bit scary. Not going to lie. If you play against someone with Archer Queen and you don't have Lightning, probably not going to be the easiest game of your life could sub out one of the cards for lightning if you wanted to like maybe removing the bandit for lightning and then putting in prince instead of mini pekka that could work but at the same time i still think that this deck is able to beat archer queen if you play well enough you can mega knight on top of it like we did every single time here we go let's see if we get another ground player i'm gonna go and cycle wall breakers at the start divide our opponent and conquer each individual tower i'm not actually trying to take both towers at the same time i just thought it sounded cool guys i felt like an ancient war general out here trying to divide our opponent so we can conquer every one of his territories. I wonder if the bats are going to give us any value. Oh, the Electro Wizard missed one of the bear of the bats. That's awesome. This is so good. I think the bandit's going to lock on the tower. If he responds to the bandit, we can Mega Knight at the river, destroy that really fast. He's going to zap too. He dropped all of his elixir. He has nothing. We're going to full send right now. This is hilarious. When your opponent overcommits against Mega Knight, you guys already know. You've seen this prophecy so many times. Their towers fall and they get decrepled in shambles in seconds. It's just how the game works. I think that Mega Knight, for this reason, is always going to be one of the best decks for mid ladder, simply because, hey, if your opponent makes a slip up, they lose the game. They can't come back because then they're going to be going into Snowballs, Mega Knights, Musketeers, great defenses. So at this point, we've won the game. The dude made a slip up, he got punished, and we walk away with a dub. So drum roll, please! Gotta give this deck a 7 out of 10. It's not that good against Lavhound, which is unfortunately a huge part of the meta. Because Lavhound got boosted, I don't know what I was expecting. Musketeer has to be the MVP of this deck. It was clutch, and even in the games that I lost, it gave me a chance of winning. This Mega Knight Mini P.E.K.K.A. deck is really solid against Hog Riders, Ram Riders, Beatdown decks, Mega Knight decks, anything that Bridge Bams at the river, especially if they overcommit at the start, they'll automatically lose the game. But I had to knock it down a few levels because it's pretty weak against people that have Archer Queen and double or triple elixir, and it struggles against balloon decks when your opponent has Inferno Dragon and multiple ways of stopping your wall breakers. Overall, it was a really fun deck for me to play because I was able to always keep up aggression with Bandit, Mini Pekka, and Mega Knight. So, from a fun ranking, I'd probably give it an 8 out of 10. Probably not the best deck for the meta. But in the future meta, when Lava Hound isn't boosted, it will be a lot stronger. So if you guys enjoyed the deck ranking series today, make sure to let me know by leaving a fat thumbs up on the video. Subscribe for future daily videos and have an awesome rest of your day.